Hello, it's Krusty again. Okay, I just wanted to redo a video that I was looking at on here that the music was so loud I could barely hear myself talk and that's not good. Nobody wants to watch that. So um, I'm going to redo uh, the story of um, my mess uh, abuse time and um, how I got really sick and um, could have almost died because of it. Um, this is what happens when a person uses um, especially something so strong like methamphetamine um, especially used to extreme levels like uh, my boyfriend and I at the time were doing it for a year this was two years ago, clean and sober two years now, thank you very much. And uh, But it was just such an incredible story and a huge eye opener for me where I finally um, just was just completely shocked um, out of it, you know, and uh, I had had enough of it uh, um, for good, you know. <laughs> but it really took a lot to, it really takes a lot for a person to get off of um, something like methamphetamine. It's so extremely addictive because of all the chemicals that are making your endorphins work and feel good and um, it's just an, quite an illusion. So anyways, um, at the time I didn't realize that I was having health problems uh, with my thyroid and IBS and different issues. I was chronically fatigued and uh, wasn't getting uh, a whole lot of professional help from doctors. Um, my thyroid went un undiagnosed for 20 years. But um, yeah, I finally fell to um, finding what I could and, um, <laughs> you know, it was obviously the wrong choice and it came to a, a very harmful, deadly end. Um, which does often the case happen with meth use as to, um, you know, you'll hear a lot that when you start doing meth, um, everything just kind of falls apart. I mean, your life falls apart. Everything in it, people around you, um, you know, your lifestyle and you lose your homes, your jobs, you know, and, and all that stuff. It is all true. I will tell you that. It is all true. Um, I know that we, we tried, you know, we thought that we, that uh, it would be okay if we just used a little bit just for energy, but then, um, of course we became junkies of it and, um, and it, in a very small amount of time, uh, got kicked out of where we were living and, um, we're forced to find another place and, um, we, because we, we were stoned out of our minds, I mean, what became a little bit became a lot every day, um, and you don't realize what you're doing at that point anymore, and life it just kind of becomes a dream, but it's not reality, and nothing is going to work if you're not in real reality anymore. <laughs> so, um, we moved to this campsite, and um, that is, we moved uh, as close as to the meth dealer as we could because they were living there also in a camper trailer. And, uh, but unfortunately, the camper trailer that we moved into was um, full of black mold. It was very old. And we did not know anything at the time about mold whatsoever. And we thought that we could just clean it off and be okay. And the whole place just smelled terrible. And I had a bad, bad feeling in my gut stomach. And, uh, but you know, my boyfriend was like, well, it's cool, we can get rid of it. And so we would sit there, you know, for like mm, a, whole, a whole year. I sat there for half of a year anyway, I know. And, um, did not show any signs of sickness until more towards the very end where my um, allergies became so intolerable from getting sick with the black mold um, that I couldn't even um, stand getting high anymore because I became allergic to all kinds of chemicals and or like um, any kind of allergies that I had with, my, with pets or um, you know, even going out of the house with um, pollen in the air and stuff, it just became intolerable. <laughs> I thought at the time that um, I was possessed, 
because I would have like these Caesar-like allergic reactions and uh, that was not the case. It was actually allergies um, and chemicals that I could not put into my body anymore. Um, it just went on to get worse from there. We got the crap out of there as soon as we could. And, um, but I do remember that uh, my boyfriend was there over a winter time and there was no heat and um, he did what he could to basically stay alive under sleeping bags and things and just keep doing his drug. Um, and it was just really scary. Um, and then it wasn't until about a year later, um, the spring after we got out, the fall time, uh, when we moved into our new place, uh, we started getting pneumonia-like symptoms all the time, like... Every two weeks, we would have to go to the ER. Unfortunately, not a lot of doctors um, were um, ha had uh, were educated enough about mold <laughs> yet, and they didn't know what was wrong with us. They'd just say it was pneumonia. They'd give us antibiotics to take home, but it would not get rid of what was really going on inside of us. In our blood, there was just black mold. Um, fungus and stuff really bad and and if you continue having any kind of like mold sickness uh, eventually your brains are going to become full of the stuff and uh, unfortunately we had parasites from them too and we just cough and puke all the time and the pain was just insurmountably um, fiery and unbearable that I finally ended up seeing some natural doctors and we finally took care of it that way and uh, treated it naturally. I will get into that in another um, episode. But um, I just want to talk about the dangers here of drugs and when and of just the um, lifestyle, the um, safe lifestyles that we become to have when we are absolutely out of control. And so, um, you know, just wanted to touch point there about that. So, thank you. Have a nice day. Hope to see you again soon. Have a nice day.